Hey everybody, I'm Rick Beato, and today's Everything Music, it's What Makes This Song Great, episode 64. The band is failure, and the song is stuck on you. Coming up next. <music> stuck on You was the first single off Failure's third album entitled Fantastic Planet. It was released in August of 1996, the song was produced, engineered, and mixed by Ken Andrews, the lead singer, and it was written by Ken and guitarist Greg Edwards. It's one of my favorite rock songs of the 90s, and it sounds phenomenal. Now, I got a chance to interview Ken about the record last week, and I don't have the tracks to the song. We're going to be working off the two mix because Ken doesn't have the tracks to the song. Warner Brothers has them. And it was actually done on ADATs, which is pretty amazing. Not only was it done on ADATs, but it was done with a Mackie console. And I asked him, how did you get the record to sound so good? So he actually told me about all the gear they used. He rented a four-channel API mic pre, or had they had that. He rented an SSL bus compressor for the mix and a bunch of other compressors for mixing. But that's a real testament to how good Ken's ear is. And he's gone on to become a very successful producer and mixer in his own right later on with some, having some huge success. So what makes this song great? The intro, right at the top of the song, the opening riff. Let's check it out. <laughs> Remember, it was 1996. I'd never heard a riff like that. That was really very space age sounding. I thought it was, wow, that is so cool. So it's two down a half step. It starts on E flat sus two. Then down to G flat sus two. That's, it's a sus nine, really, because it's root fifth nine, root fifth nine. Then we have a C power chord with a fifth in the bass. Then F power chord, A flat power chord. Over that, we have this really hip melody that uses all these upper extensions. It starts right on this E flat sus two, right on the second, right? And he adds in the sus four there. Then it goes up to G flat, and it does a, a G flat major seven with the sixth in it, or major 13. So you get the major seven, the sixth, and the third. And then he throws in the ninth for good measure, right? And then you go to, to the C minor 11 sound. And that becomes the flat six on it, so it's really hip voicing. And that tritone bass movement is very, very modern. And then it goes to this F. It's really, it's an F power chord. Don't be confused because it's at the second fret here. Remember, it's two down half steps up. It's an A flat power chord. And over that you have flat six, root, flat seven. And then back to the fifth. And then that's more like an A flat six chord. Let's check out the verse. Simple power chords. Here, though, he's playing a C minor seven sound, and then straight power chords. Let's go listen on. Chorus.
One thing that gives this chorus its power are the power chords played in the bass. With distortion. That makes it so heavy. This is what I'm using for the bass. It's the Alpha Omega pedal by Dark Glass. Dark Glass makes the best bass pedals, period. That I, I, ha I have three different ones and they all sound amazing. You can sculpt the low end and the gain just right. I happen to be playing this through an amp. It actually, to me, sounds great. I like to use it just direct. Ken was telling me this. They were using guitar distortion pedals and then they had to put an EQ after it and get the bass back. You didn't have specific bass distortion, so you'd have to actually add that low end back in because the guitar pedals end up shelving 100 hertz and below. The other thing that makes this track great is the drumming. Now, it's very simple drumming. It's what I call caveman style. 16th note rolls on the toms, nothing fancy. Riding on the big crash ride. He had, he had when I saw him play, like a 24-inch crash ride. Psh, psh. Great, but the kick and snare are so fat. Let's check it out and watch the caveman. Right here. You can't beat caveman fills. That's what makes drums sound huge. Especially when you have a guitar line like that, you don't want to crowd the line by having some fill there that detract from that simple da 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 that simple eighth note melody since i didn't have access to the multi-tracks i thought it was really important to find out from ken how he recorded these massively big guitar sounds so he told me he blended a jmp preamp and a two power amp with get this a fender twin with my old Big Muff from Russia here. Check this out. Three, four. You gotta be right here next to the amp to really hear how good that sounds. Next, I'd like to talk about what makes the melody great in this song. The verse and chorus are very similar in, in structure and what makes them great. They're chord tone melodies, meaning that they're using notes of the chord. It's very much a, a Nirvana, Kurt Cobain-esque melody. He's using thing, a lot of thirds on downbeats and upper extensions of the chords, 11s, 9s, things like that, that make it have a really melodic sound. So he starts right out. Third, fifth, fifth on the E chord. Da, 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 da. He resolves right down to the to the ninth of this chord, the sus2. Da, 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 da. Then he goes fifth, third, third on the C sharp minor, C minor. Then da, 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 da. It's from the fourth to the 11, right? Da, third, third, nine. And then root second. And then third. Da, 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 da. da, 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 da. He sings that sharp 11. Da, 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 da. Let's talk about the lead into the first chorus here. Caveman. Nothing fancy about that fill. It has exactly what it needs. Once again, it's a non-fill. If he did anything faster in value, any 16th notes or triplets, it would detract from the melody with the harmony. And then you just, that last hit, Nothing but just that crash and kick right with the melody. And then you have that delayed entrance of the melody in the chorus with the harmonies. Okay, this is all chord tone based. You have on the first chord, you have the, in the melody of the root and then the third above, so. And then the second chord, you have the fifth and the major seven and then then you have the root and the flat third on the C minor chord. And then... Too tired. Too tired. So it's going the fifth and the ninth. And then... 
once again, it's an A flat six chord, right? And he's singing the third and the sixth. And then it resolves to the ninth in the melody or sus two and the fifth, super strong. It's that same, it's the important notes of that E sus two chord. That's what I call a really modern sounding melody, using all those upper structures along with the chord tones. The upper structures are what we call color tones. If you use too many of them, the melody has no grounding, but when you use just the right amount, you have an incredibly strong melody. Once again, that is a Nirvana-esque thing. Kurt Cobain would use those 11s, sharp 11s, 9s all the time in his melody. It smells like Teen Spirit's full of those kind of things. And Ken is doing that in this melody, which is why it sounds really melodic. What I really love about this track is how crushing the kick and snare are all through the track. In the chorus, listen to The other thing that makes this song great is that the, it doesn't follow a predictable form. And there's no real bridge until the ending of the song. The out chorus is actually the bridge. It's the first time that the chorus changes and goes somewhere different. It's over the same chords, but check it out. So this is all the same. And then right here, right here, brings in that flat seven right there harmony on the E chord, E flat chord, really, and then then he goes from the, the third of that uh, chord, the G flat or G chord, however you want to call it, and then that makes it a minor, minor seven chord, C minor seven, so it's a flat seven to the fifth, and then... Great harmony, so it's on the A chord, and then this little love it that's all for now please subscribe here to my everything music youtube channel if you're interested in the beato book go to my website at www.rickbeato.com that's how i support this channel is really through things that you buy on the website beato book t-shirts, mugs. Follow me on Instagram at rickbeato1. If you want to support the channel even more, become a member of the Beato Club. Thanks so much for watching.